of uh, Nano Harmony. And um, we will have this introduction to the workshop and background to the OECD test guidelines in the beginning. The agenda will be for the next, uh, for today and for the day of tomorrow, uh, will be then introduced at the end of my presentations. So it all started with the Malta Initiative in 2017, where it began. So uh, the objective of the Malta Initiative in 2017 was to fill the gaps of missing test guidelines for nanomaterials to, to fulfill the requirements for REACH registration. And um, in this year, 2017, um, it was that we addressed the uh, commission, especially RTD, that uh, it is necessary to get really test guidelines in place for the REACH regulation, but not only for the REACH regulation, also to fulfill the requirements, for example, for the EU definition for nanomaterials and also for other regulation like FSA and cosmetics and so on. And starting there, we managed, and uh, there were several announcements made along to the Malta initiative uh, to push forward the test guideline development. And we had the NMBP 13 projects, which started in January 2019, and of which uh, I was uh, happy to work and collaborate and still am happy to collaborate there with Coffo Nano. But this also included RISCON and Nano Rego. And uh, Nano Harmony, the project actually um, organizing this workshop towards OECD test guidelines started in April 2020. And when you see here, you see that we have the three Nano Harmony workshops, which were always in November. In June, we were very, very happy together with Mar and the uh, sister projects uh, Nano uh, Met which uh, is represented here during this session uh, this afternoon also by Ann and uh, by Mar. So we do this in collaboration and uh, within Nano Harmony, we had the possibility to have the meeting at OECD to present what was achieved in view of test guideline and which direction we should follow for the rest or uh, the second half of the project of Nano Harmony. So with this third workshop, we are uh, one year uh, before the final of um, Nano Harmony, which is in September 2023. And so we have the chance here to actually also introduce to you our ideas towards the last year of Nano Harmony, and maybe also have a start of a discussion towards what will come up uh, maybe after Nano Harmony as a legacy of Nano Harmony. And I will come to that at the end of this presentation. Um, it's three Nano Harmony online workshops. This one is the third one. Uh, it started as an online workshop because we had no possibility to really start with a face to face meeting in 2020. And uh, it was really the first management committee meeting last uh, two weeks ago where we actually had a face to face meeting. Um, otherwise, most of the work of Nano Harmony was done as in online uh, collaboration. And it was really in this case for this workshops really good because we now have the possibility to really outreach to all the different member countries and people and researchers and regulators interested in OECD test guidelines uh, to be regulated worldwide. And with that one, uh, we can see that we tried with Nano Harmony, and you see here all the partners and associated partners coming up here as well and coming from regulatory part, point of view coming from research, coming from industry, uh, coming from NGOs. So we have all the different partners being nowadays involved in Nano Harmony, And it's great that we can work here together uh, with, I think, quite a few, not only quite a few, uh, quite a lot of the um, OECD member countries here together. So Nano Harmony has three main to do's or what we do in Nano Harmony. We have a work package one, develop and validate test methods for OECD, which will be part of my presentation where I will give you an update on what we, where we are within work package one. And we have the work package two and work package two and three, formation of a network to interact with all relevant stakeholders. This afternoon, we have a session really where we are discussing 
who are the relevant stakeholders and who should get, uh, should get involved at which development stage. And in, uh, you see as a last point, develop a structure to translate science into test methods used in regulation, which also has a look beyond NanoHarmony, how we can keep this cooperation coordination activity ongoing. So interact with all relevant stakeholders. We have webinars, regular online workshops, physical meetings uh, with the participation of uh, these stakeholder groups. We inform, um, we uh, enable exchange, gather information, and we also train on what are test guidelines, how are they developed and what is missing. And this is all done in cooperation with Nanomet interacting for example, with the nano safety cluster, the EU Asia dialogue, the CROs, uh, the laboratories actually using the test guidelines. And you can see um, some of these interactions and these webinars um, of the past events on the webpage of NanoHarmony, HTTPS, nanoharmony.eu events. Next meeting in Brussels, uh, which will be uh, April 2023, which will be a physical meeting, a policy meeting, and I will come a little bit into detail what that meeting will be about uh, during this presentation. So we also, and that was uh, something we uh, wanted to do within uh, NanoHarmony, had to look into the steps of a test guideline development. You see uh, at the bottom of this slide, the init initial idea comes first. Without an idea, nothing happens. And then we have the phases like the project proposal and the SPSF, which is an OECD stage, the technical development, which is also uh, an OECD uh, phase, and the commenting and approval phase, um, which is also OECD. Last but not least, in the end, the test guidelines are developed to be used. There is a using phase, and we certainly have to have a look at this phase as well. And within a survey and interviews we had uh, and webinars, we were looking into these steps and identify hurdles and find solution, which we um, actually then present and have presented and will present in the future as a result of the work in work package two and three. In the future, TG developments um, have to be also supported beyond the fields of nanomaterials. So we look into the legacy of NanoHarmony. NanoHarmony can offer quite a bit besides what we have done uh, with regard to the scientific background development for test guidelines and guidance documents. We also um, had gained a lot of experience. We have a, a network form where we collaborate uh, trustfully together worldwide where we have information gathered on the process on what is needed. And as said, not only for nanomaterials, but we also, and you will hear that tomorrow, I have a look into advanced materials, materials parts, uh, which is certainly uh, an important part where we have to, to look at. We do this uh, certainly as a legacy with training materials, which will be in collaboration with Nanomet as always, and uh, where we make that available at the OECD webpage and at other pages. And we have the interactive guidance, which we will work on regular online workshops, test guidelines and guidance documents for nanomaterials and a white paper which uh, will be formed and then be presented also uh, in view of what we want to have as a more wider impact of NanoHarmony on the short term directly after NanoHarmony and maybe on the middle term scale as well. Good. I think you, quite a few of you have already seen this slide in the one or the other phase. Um, you see here the ongoing OECD guideline and guidance document developments related to go for nano and NanoHarmony. These are all projects which are at the OECD level. And you see two of them uh, being finalized, uh, the one on the volume specific surface area, which was led by the EU JRC. And uh, another one where a study report on preliminary guidance on adaptation of in vitro mammalian, and now that's covered genotoxicity test guideline of testing of NMs. And you see also on the left side, the TG on particle size and size distribution have been finalized. The others are ongoing activities related to the one or the other projects. 
rela uh, related to the Malta Initiative. Um, a dedicated talk on uh, the second day of this workshop will be on the developments and revisions of OECD test guidelines and guidance documents applicable for nanomaterials, where we have a standardization roadmap from go for nano as well as a document which is summarizing all OECD related activities from those being finalized, those in work and those which can be anticipated or maybe suggested in the near future, which is a document presented tomorrow. So um, here I have now uh, the problem that the title is covered with um, that I can't read the title, a tiered approach um, uh, on bioaccumulation potential of uh, engineered nanomaterials is one of the tasks. I will now present the different tasks, up to eight tasks we have in uh, NanoHarmony, which are related to specific test guideline guidance document developments. And the bioaccumulation potential of ENMs is uh, the lead partner is the University of Plymouth. And the topic here is to provide scientific evidence and data to support and facilitate the acceptance of a tiered approach to bioaccumulation testing in fish. Um, I will not go within the next slides all of the text uh, in detail, the, since it will be recorded, all the slides and the presentation will be available in the near future on YouTube. And if you want to have details of the slides, you can actually have a look at the video, stop the video at that point of time, and then have a look at the details uh, bullet points being listed in some of these slide upcoming slides. So please, just for time constraints and to keep the presentation concise, um, I will only lead uh, and bring up the main topics of the slides. Acceptance of tiered approach to bioaccumulation is here the topic. And there have been several results, as you see on the left-hand side uh, publication. There will be upcoming soon a submission of the SPSF to the WNT, so which is the OECD stage. And there will be a dedicated talk on uh, this uh, tiered approach on the second day, so tomorrow, where you will see um, more details and presentation of this activity. Another activity which is led by RIVM, uh, the Netherlands, is a new test guideline on toxicokinetics for engineered nanomaterials, which is on the test guideline. It provides a scientific basis, as all of the work of NanoHarmony in Work Package 1, providing scientific basis for the minimum requirements of the study design of in vivo toxicokinetic studies of engineered nanomaterials. And there are some results, inhalation studies were conducted and the results and uh, the final, final uh, analysis of the experimental data is ongoing. And there will be a second inhalation experiment and all data will be combined and put in uh, to as a validation report towards the new test guideline on toxicokinetics for engineered nanomaterials. <laughs> Uh, guidance on the determination of engineered nanomaterials in biological samples that is a lead by UK Health Service Agency. And this is a guidance support the development on the determination of concentration of ENMs in biological samples. And as you may guess, this is very good complementary to uh, studies um, uh, with animal studies and the toxicokinetic, but in general, it is an important step on identifying and clearly quantifying nanomaterials in tissues of animals. Um, there will be a dedicated uh, talk today towards a nanoparticle certified reference material for use in, in, in this line. So more details will be given there. There will be... Um, a new guidance on the determination of solubility and dissolution rates of engineered nanomaterials. And uh, one of this one is solubility has been tested in, and were part of quite a few uh, European projects. So here we have the focus on data uh, to be collected, but also to really um, do an interlaboratory comparison 
to have really a good background information then for this guidance document. And there will be a dedicated talk this afternoon. NRCWE is the leading partner from Denmark and presenting this work on solubility and dissolution rate. There's also a new guidance being worked on uh, towards uh, determination of the surface chemistry, chemistry and coatings of nano and microscale uh, materials. This is also led by the Danish partner NRCWE and here support of the development um, for the qualitative and quantitative characterization of the surface chemistry of engineered nanomaterials. There were two parts, like with the solubility, a part being done in Gofor Nano, and there was a dedicated part also in Nano Harmony. So these projects are covered by both of the projects. And here are the results. Um, there has been already done uh, an intercomparison, which is uh, interlaboratory comparison and uh, interlaboratory comparison of a smaller uh, amount from five nanomaterials has been done. And you see here with quite a few participants from Canada, Europe, Asia, Africa, and Oceania. 15 and 13 participants, the instrumentation involved, you will see listed on the lower left side. And uh, the completion of this interlaboratory comparison for the surface chemistry is foreseen for the end of this year and reporting of the data in 2023. And uh, then the guidance and submission to WNT is foreseen end of 2023, if everything runs extremely smoothly, maybe a little bit later, uh, if we have some handicaps coming up or some further discussion being necessary to draft this. Um, now I'm wondering why, now, okay, it's working again. Um, and we have a very, a, a quite large um, activity also for new test guideline or uh, new test guidelines and two guidance documents on dustiness testing. So dustiness testing is for powders and that can be powders for particles or powders of fibers. And we have uh, there the two activities ongoing in Goffo Nano, the dustiness of powders in Nano Harmony, the dustiness of fibers is really tested, the test guidelines. And what is also worked on, um, how the data can be made, um, made uh, usable for the assessment of exposure and also for ATEX, so assessment of explosivity and combustibility um, uh, as um, yeah, dust explosions may occur. This um, relatively big activity on dustiness is led by INERIS, a partner from France, with quite some activity and contributions also from Denmark, NRC, WE, and Bauer. And the results, um, the uh, interlaboratory uh, inter -laboratory, um, comparison data on non-HAN is mostly complete. So the internal reporting is uh, currently at uh, the management committee level. So we hope to be ready there by the beginning of next year. And the HARN, so the high aspect ratio uh, nanomaterial testing of fibers ILC started. And uh, we hope to get all this finished till the end of uh, this year. As you see on the right-hand side, scientific paper beginning of next year. Um, Non-HAN and ranking should be established and the performing of the ILC experiments HAN at the end of 2023 with the evaluation. Modeling and ATEX guidance document development will be uh, coming along with scientific publications foreseen in the first and second quarter of 2023. Um, a new guidance uh, um, of integrated assessment of intestinal fate of orally ingested engineered nanomaterials. Um, so here it is uh, the general objective to establish the scientific basis, basis for the development of a new guidance document on integrated in vitro approaches for the understanding of this intestinal fate. The lead is here with Italy, ISS. Uh, List Luxembourg is quite actively involved in this one uh, as well. And the results will be consolidated into a draft guidance on integrated in vitro approaches. This is what is aimed for. 
And with the results uh, being listed on the left side, looking into SOPs, definition of the SOP for tree culture models, and definition of the analytical essential criteria being important steps here in the development already finalized. And the next steps, the publication of the complete literature review, the interlaboratory comparison in the biological systems will be started. And these uh, results will be evaluated and consolidated then in a draft guidance document. And I think this one is the last one of the activities. And you see that uh, quite a few test guidelines are worked on and uh, will come out of Nano Harmony and go for Nano, which is a technical recommendation on testing and ENMs according to the OECD test guideline 201, 202, and 203. Um, so it's on aquatic exo ecotoxicity testing, uh, which is on algae growth inhibition, acute toxicity test there, uh, which is worked on here by INEA, which is a partner from Spain. And there you see that we have really quite a few partner involved from all different countries within Europe uh, in this activity on developing test guidelines for the testing of nanomaterials, advanced materials. So um, ENMs tested for the uh, testing of ecotox task and uh, respectively stability and toxicity results. And there were publications on this and <coughs> results. And as with all of the other problems with um, nanomaterials and liquids, it's always the dispersion um, SOP and how that can be really used for testing these here, in this case, the TG202 on for, uh, for Daphnia Magna. Consolidated SOPs, completion of the ILC, and then a draft and submit of the revised guidance document 317 will be then the aim of what is done in this task. So you see here within NanoHarmony, quite a lot was done on specific test guidelines developments, but um, as already introduced in the beginning, work package two and three are also working on uh, the frame. How do we achieve this kind of developments? How do we actually inform all the different stakeholders? How can we have an integrated approach that we have a high acceptance of these test guidelines? So um, the Nano Harmony legacy, which was working on the points I just mentioned, aims to support and facilitate future TB, uh, TG developments. Continuing this exchange is something which we find important. Supporting future OECD TG GD developers by, for example, an interactive guidance and training materials. Making suggestions to streamline the process, setting priorities to test guideline developments and updates, which is, I think, a topic which will always come up every year, um, so which is a continuous um, effort we have to undertake. And last but not least, also raising awareness of the importance of a constant effort to keep OECD test guidelines also up to date. There is just the example for the test guideline on particles and particle size distribution. Uh, which was uh, developed for the TG125 uh, tw uh, um, for nanomaterials. The old one, 110, uh, was developed in 1981 and is still valid. And certainly it's not up to date and it's something we have to work on um, and which has to be done there as uh, also for particles larger than the nanomaterial size. So within the legacy, we need to collaborate in doing this among different areas. Certainly within the OECD, we have to integrate all this exposure and risk assessment, advanced materials. There's not only the working party on manufacturing nanomaterial, but those also on exposure assessment, on risk assessment, or on advanced materials. Um, we do, and I think it's important that we keep something like the nano safety cluster alive and collaborate there closely together with the scientists. And also it is important that we have a good integration from all over uh, the world to actually achieve um, that we have a good interaction and collaboration for, with all OECD member countries. And last but not least, um, it means that we have to collaborate also with industry and it, it's, it, we are happy to do so. Scientists, regulators, policymakers, NGOs, and so on. These are certainly points which we have to consider 
when we think about the nanoharmony legacy. So with that, I come to the point and um, it was quite some speedy going through all the slides. I hope it was not too fast of you. Um, I hope that you could pick up the one or the other information again. If it was too quick, uh, we will upload the recording and make it available to you so that you can have a closer look into the one or the other topic and can you, uh, you can keep uh, yourself then informed this way as well. That was the introduction and background of the OECD TG development by me. And uh, we are now uh, coming to the second or to the presentation being foreseen for the lunch breaks um, towards a nanomaterial certified reference material by Rob Clough. Solubility and dissolution rate by Kelt R. Sub Jensen and uh, towards TG's Go for Nano project, um, the, uh, being presented by Eric Bleeker. Um, the lunch break, and in the afternoon, we will have a round table where we will discuss in detail with uh, Mar Gonzalez from the OECD, Tim Singer, uh, Singer from Canada, who was uh, the chair of the WNT before, uh, Michael. Elgeschläger, who is now chair of the WNT, and Susan Walter-Rode, uh, being a WNT member. We will discuss with them stakeholder involvement at the different phases, which um, I introduced very, very briefly uh, in this presentation. So this is the first day. It will end with a short roundup by Elizabeth. And tomorrow, Mar Gonzalez uh, from the OECD will uh, lead you through the day. And there will be a very interesting presentation by Isilt, uh, update on risk on project test guideline developments. Anke Jesse will present on the activities and achievements made by the Malta Initiative. And Elizabeth will uh, introduce to you the developments or revisions of OECD test guidelines, which is a status report just recently, I think a month ago, being published and summarizing the status as it is now and uh, a standardization roadmap, which was developed in GoFornano by, for example, the JRC. There will also be the presentation by Richard Handy update on the new gap filling experiment data on digestible assays and preliminary data from earthworm studies on titanium dioxide. Lunch break and in the afternoon, we think it is time and this is important to bridge and to really come together here also from the standardization and harmonization side, the topics of nanomaterials, advanced materials and materials. So exploiting the lessons learned from nanomaterials and what we can do there uh, in collaboration with advanced materials, which will be led by Mar Gonzalez with uh, members of this round table from Lars Montelius from the Amy Steering Board, Dennis Kolso from ISO, Catherine Schwian from UBA, and uh, Harald Bosse from uh, as, uh, PTB, which is uh, an... Oh, I forgot the English name for it. It is uh, setting the primary uh, or linking to primary standards um, uh, measurements. So uh, quite important partners in working there together on standardization and harmonization. So with that, um, my summary and my outlook uh, for these two days, upcoming two days, and what was already achieved on the test guideline developments in detail. This slide um, as well gives you information how to contact us in case you have questions or you would like to make a recommendation or would inform us which priorities we should set. With this, I'm happy uh, to see and ask whether there are some questions upcoming. Klaus Swenson yeah, is- there's one. One question in the in the chat from David Hon in, about the dustiness methods. The CIOs are working with Nano would like to buy the appropriate equipment to be able to run the future OECD methods. Will this equipment detail be available by the end of 2022? And I think the, the ethos we developed around this is that rather than give a specific equipment piece name, it will be the, the technical capability spec of the machine and the measurements to be made that goes in so that it's future proof in terms of, of 
new equipment development that comes on board rather than listing a piece of equipment that is then hard to go and change 10 years later. Um, I don't know whether somebody can specifically answer that question in terms of what the equipment is uh, in the chat later. Um, but other than that, there's no questions, Thomas. I don't know whether you want to comment further on that. Uh, perfectly done, Klaus. Um, nothing to add from my side. Good. Okay. Okay. Um, then I'm happy to actually pass on to Rob. Um, so Rob is giving a presentation on the work which is done towards nanoparticle certified reference materials. And Rob, I hope that everything is running fine for you and that the link is good, that there are no disturbances in the line. And so I pass on the word to you. Thank you, Thomas. Yeah, I think everything's 